My name is Juliet Waters. I work as an audio recordist, specialized in EVP, electronic voice phenomena. Or as my friends say, I'm a ghost recorder. But I like to see it more as a two-way communication. I'm intrigued to know why they chose to linger in between the worlds. Or maybe they didn't choose at all. Maybe something is holding them back. Maybe I can help them take that step into the light. I don't know. But I can hear them. They're talking. And that's why I record. I live a couple of hours drive from Sajino, an old family park that's been closed to the public since forever. I have heard there is a back entrance into the park via an old walking bridge. I just bought an old piece of recording equipment and I figured it could be a good place to test it out on. Welcome to Silvio. As the introduction said, you play as someone who is investigating ghosts at an abandoned park. And as you might have guessed, this park hasn't exactly had a great history. Some very bad stuff has happened here which has left some, uh, let's just say, unrestful spirits still lingering. This game is bizarrely obscure. Even though it came out pretty recently and it is on Steam, at the time of recording, there's actually only 17 user reviews on Steam, which is an extraordinarily small number. I'm really not quite sure why. So yeah, let me just show you what this game is all about. So it's a horror game, and your main tools are basically your microphone, which you use to record the voices of ghosts that you find, as well as your tape player that you use to process the voices that you do record because the recordings that you make from the ghosts are not always exactly very clean, and they often need a lot of processing to be able to actually make out words. And you also use the help of your trusty weapon. Now, despite what this might look like, this game is not at all a first-person shooter. You're not going to be shooting zombies or anything like that, or shooting ghosts. Although you do end up shooting ghost orbs. So I guess you do kind of shoot ghosts. Um, but yeah, it's not a shooter. This gun doesn't actually shoot bullets, it's actually some sort of a strange pesticide gun that shoots basically anything you shove down the barrel. And you do shove many, many different things down the barrel. You shove baseballs, I'm pretty sure potatoes, uh, bolts, nuts, and some other stuff that I can't even identify, like this. I don't know what these are. They look kind of like mushrooms, but... I think they're like nails or something, but they're really, really thick. I don't know. I, I really, I really don't know. But yeah, you pretty much just shove whatever the heck you want down the barrel and shoot it. And there's various different forms of ammo, like I said, baseballs and potatoes and stuff like that, but there's actually only two kinds of ammo. There's basically uh, sharp projectiles, which are used for shooting black orbs, and then there's also the blunt objects that are used for pushing things around. So pushing things around, the blunt ammo is used for solving puzzles pretty much, knocking down boards and things like that to open up pathways and, and things of that sort. And the sharp projectiles are for killing enemies, basically. But again, it's really not a shooter. And every time you shoot, it uses up some of your compressed gas that you have. So if you keep shooting, you're going to want to grab a new canister, such as this, to uh, replenish your shot power. So that's your ghost hunting arsenal. Your microphone to record, your tape player to process the recordings, and your gun. And that's pretty much it. And with those, you go around and gather information and make recordings and basically just try to uh, find keys and stuff like that to unlock the doors, the many, many doors that um, impede your progress. I believe there's a black orb somewhere up here. Um, th this isn't much of a spoiler, by the way, because this is within the first 15 or 20 minutes of the game, so nothing much will be spoiled. I believe there's a black orb somewhere up here. So let me just show you a bit of gameplay. Let's just do gameplay in general so you can see how it works. So here's a, a general recording. I'm not, not going to listen to that because I don't think it's particularly important right now. 
Yeah, there's basically two two kinds of recordings you can get. You can get the ones that you make yourself, that you record with this microphone, and you can also find tapes throughout the world like that one I just found, which are just left by other people. There's also some things that you can break, such as this painting, and you can collect the shards and shove those shards down the barrel of your gun. Again, I'm not exactly sure how effective it would be to use a pesticide gun to shoot glass shards. I don't really get how that works, but uh, I'll take it. You can see that there's various um, white things that you can see through the wall with the distances telling you where stuff is. I'll explain a little bit more about that later. Is that a hole in the ceiling? Why, yes it is. Okay, so there's a black orb. There's a nasty black orb. And if it touches you, you die. So let's shoot it with our sharp projectiles. There we go, simple as that. Now let's make a recording. Okay, there we go. So I just made a recording of whatever that black orb wanted to say to me. I, I guess they release their thoughts once you shoot them for some reason. Not really quite sure why, but there you go. And this actually is one of... Actually, no, this isn't one of. This is the coolest mechanic in the entire game. This is basically the one thing that I think this game does really well. And it's really cool, and I've never seen it in a game before. So this is how this works. It's the the processing of the voices that you record. That's the really cool part about this game. So I just made this recording. This one down here all the way in the bottom. The one that says gasoline. So let's start to play the recording. Okay. You are in complete control of the player. So basically you use WASD to control whether you're going forwards, backwards, and whether you're going forwards and backwards slow or fast. So I can go forwards, I can go forwards fast, I can go forwards slow, and same thing backwards. Slow, normal speed, and fast. And it feels really good, it just, the controls feel really satisfying, it's very intuitive to do this, and it's really cool to just hunt for voices and try to listen for them. So let's just play this at normal speed forwards and hunt for some hidden messages in the audio. Okay, I just heard something. It sounded like it was backwards, so let's play it backwards. No? Okay, it wasn't backwards. It sounded like maybe it was slow, so let's try playing it forwards, but fast. Oh, okay, no. That wasn't what I was supposed to do, but it looks like there is a message that you need to speed up to hear, but it looks like it's backwards if I play it forwards, so let's play it fast backwards. There we go. Yeah, so that's how it works. You make recordings, and you gotta listen for something that sounds like it's... If it's if it sounds like it's too slow, then you need to play it fast. And if it sounds like it's really fast, then you need to play it slow. Or maybe you just need to play it backwards. You gotta listen for that, and... It's really satisfying to find those things and hunt them down. So that is by far the coolest thing that this game does. Unfortunately, though... Doesn't really matter that much. When you discover those messages hidden within, you get a little bit of text like that. That says, uh, strapped down and, and buried, I think it says. Unfortunately though, those messages that you discover aren't usually very important. And you can see the recording above this one says the yellow house, and then the one above that says down the hatch. Now, they might have some slight story significance, but they don't really matter that much. What really matters is the um, the little bit of text that appears at the top, already revealed even before you process the message. You can see the latest one that I've just done here says gasoline. So basically you get that as like a freebie. You hear that message just in the normal recording without processing. 
And that's the important part, because gasoline, as you can see, is now one of those white messages with a distance attached to it. And that's one of the main gameplay mechanics of this game. And something that you'll be doing throughout the entirety of it is finding black orbs, shooting them, recording them, and then by listening to the message, it'll reveal where certain items are that you need to progress. So in this case, there's gasoline over there. So if I make my way over there, I can get the gasoline. You can see there's also something here that I need. Um, you can use your microphone to actually uh, basically find out the, uh, the combination to get inside of this. Use it to listen in for the clicks. There we go. Alright. That is something I need to open some doors. And, um... Honestly, that's pretty much it. This game is actually very, very simple. That really is pretty much it. Um, record what black orbs say. And from those recordings, it reveals where items are. And then you try to make your way to the items. Collect them, and they will be used to progress further in the game. That's honestly pretty much it. I'm trying to think if there's anything else um, to show about how the game's played. So just use that to unlock that. There we go. Um, I think something big might happen here. So I'm to avoid spoilers, I don't want to progress anymore here. Yeah. I think I'll leave it there. So that's basically it for how the game is played, and so let's talk more about the overall experience of playing through this game, because if you just see this little snippet that I've just showed you, it might seem really interesting, and I was indeed very intrigued by this game at first, when I was still learning the ropes and trying to figure everything out. Um, however, what you've just seen here in the past, like, ten minutes or so, is basically the entirety of the game, and it's not a super short game either. It's probably like three to five hours, I would estimate, just off the top of my head. Uh, depends on how much of a completionist you are. But it's actually a reasonably lengthy game. It's, it's pretty lengthy. But the gameplay gets very, very repetitive, because for the entire game, it is just what you've just seen here. Shoot a black orb, go to a place, collect a thing, use that to unlock another door, shoot another black orb, collect some more things, use that to open another door. And there's even some outdoor sections. Um, there's actually some driving sections. This car here is a car that you can actually drive. In fact, that's what I'm trying to do right now in the game, is actually collect all the items to fix this car. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. That's why I needed the, uh, the gasoline. That's why I still need the gasoline. It's to fuel up the car, and you need, like, a spare tire and stuff. So you actually end up repairing this car and actually driving it. And so you end up driving on an overworld map, and... The map is... big and empty, and it's slow to, to traverse. Just as it's slow to actually walk around. And there is no sprint, by the way. So a lot of this game is doing the same things again and again, and very, very slowly walking from location to location. At first it's not too bad, but it really, you know, after like three hours, and then after four hours, and then after five hours, it really started to wear me down. And it ended up getting very tedious. Because I was just very slowly doing the same things that I've already done throughout the entirety of the game. Not particularly interesting. So it's a very repetitive game. And it's also one that feels extremely janky. So let's just go over some of the jank in this game. It's um, it's very unpolished, unfortunately. So let's just start with some little things. Okay, one example. Um, there's no mouse support in the menu. So even though you use the mouse to control the game when you're moving your character around, when you go to the menu, you have to use the keyboard, which is very bizarre. Um, another example. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention, once you go to the settings menu, you actually can use the mouse. But when you're in the main menu, you can't. Yeah, I don't really get it. Another thing is the lack of options. For example, there are no subtitles whatsoever. Which can be a problem, because the audio mixing is not great. And some of the characters tend to kind of mumble. 
and you're listening to not the highest quality recordings on your tape player, so it can be an issue. So that's not great. Uh, movement is very, very um, kind of slippy, slidey. It's like you're moving around on ice all the time. Like you don't, your player character doesn't stop moving as soon as you stop pressing a direction key. So there's kind of a lot of momentum and it feels very loose, which becomes quite a problem later in the game because you actually have to do a significant amount of basically platforming, jumping from place to place to, to reach the objects that you need. You actually have to do that quite a bit. And when the movement is slippy and slidey and doesn't feel good, it's really easy to fall off and then once again have to very slowly walk all the way back. It can get pretty frustrating. Let's see, what else? Um, the gun is... weird. The gun is very, very strange. For example, it says in the controls menu, if you look in the bottom right, it says, um, the right mouse button for aim shot. So I thought that'd be some sort of an iron sight or something. Uh, but it's not. What it does is this. Every time you right click, it shoots out a ghost projectile to show you where your actual shot is going to go. This weird little white glowy thing. <laughs> so this is my right click showing me where my shard that I'm going to shoot is going to go, and then if I actually shoot the shard, what do you know, it does exactly that. So it works, but it's really weird. It just feels so janky. And if you want to get to a different type of ammo, like for example, let's say I need blunt ammo, but I've just filled my barrel up with this, this sharp ammo. If I want to get to my blunt ammo, the only thing I can do is just continue to shoot my sharp ammo out until I make my way down to the blunt ammo. Like this, there we go. Now I can shoot blunt ammo. It's just really clumsy. Another problem is that the car drives like a greased up cinder block on ice. It's very unpleasant to drive, it's surprisingly slow, and it's really hard to navigate while in the car. Because to navigate, you have to use either a crow, which will, for some reason, fly in the direction that you need to go, but you can only really follow it if you get out of the car, or if you use your recorder, like this, and point it in a direction until you see a number like that, and that will tell you the direction to go. But that also requires you to get out of your car. And getting out of the car is slow and awkward, and it ends up being the case that it's almost faster to just walk the whole way, rather than drive. It's, it's very, very strange. Another little issue is that the black orbs that kill you when they touch you, they travel through anything, even walls. So if one is coming for you, it's going to be able to get to you no matter what. And when you're reading a note, for example, the game doesn't actually pause time. So I found myself multiple times reading a note and a black orb was, unbeknownst to me, approaching. And I didn't even hear it because by the time I heard it, it was basically already touching me. And so I've been reading notes multiple times and just suddenly fell dead because a black orb that I didn't hear came up behind me and just turned me into a ghost too. Which is a little bit frustrating. And there was also a time when I got out of my car and for some reason, when I got out of the car, I glitched through the bottom of the ground and ended up falling into the void through the world, and I had to quit out of the game and start it back up just to reset my spawn position. Also, something that kept happening again and again very, very frequently is all the time I would press the wrong combination of keys and somehow make it so that I couldn't bring up my gun anymore. I go to press the key to bring up the gun and it just wouldn't come up. And to solve that, I always have to just mash a bunch of keys, like switch between my microphone and my inventory items and just mash stuff and turn my flashlight on and off to finally somehow make it so that my gun actually comes back. So that's some of the strange and janky things that have happened in this game. There's many, many more, but suffice to say, overall, it just feels very unpolished. It feels very unfinished and very strange. And it's something that pervades throughout the entire game. It's not just one part that feels unpolished. It really is everything, from the movement, to the weapons, to the inventory switching, to the menus, to the game's options. It's just very unpolished, very clunky. 
Also another, um, I, I hate to beat up on this game too much, especially because of how unknown it is, but another thing I didn't care for all that much is the story. Which is perhaps surprising and kind of sad for a game that really is, it's focused pretty, pretty much on the story because of the main gameplay mechanics of listening to the voices of ghosts and processing what they have to say. You know, the main mechanic is basically collecting information from spirits. And so you'd think it'd have a pretty rich story, since most of what you're doing, ostensibly, is supposed to be finding out what happened to these, these spirits. You know, why are they still here? But the story is just doled out in really small little fragments, and it's doled out very tediously. One thing I haven't shown you is that you actually can do some seances, where you light a candle and basically have a conversation uh, with a spirit. And doing that is basically like making a bunch of these recordings. Where you ask the spirit a question, and then you wait maybe 5 or 10 seconds for the recording to actually finish recording, and then you process it and hear maybe a, a couple word answer. And then you record again, wait another 10 seconds, go back into the recordings, start playing it again, once again process it, and hear another, like, three or four word answer. And it can be very tedious, and usually the information that you get from these conversations with these spirits is not concrete enough to do anything with, not concrete enough to make any clear picture. It's just, it's too small, it's too tedious to get these little bits of information, these little nuggets of information, and it doesn't add up to enough. There's just not enough meat to the story. So, in summary, it's a very clunky game that tried to do something interesting. It tried to be about talking with spirits and processing audio. And it accomplished that to some degree. The audio processing mechanic here of playing recordings and going slow and fast and backwards to try to hear what they have to say, it is there and it is interesting. But unfortunately, everything else just really detracts from that. In the end, it ends up being a game about basically tediously collecting things and walking back and forth aimlessly. And trust me, you will get stuck multiple times in this game. I got stuck at least two times and had to look up uh, video walkthroughs just to be able to progress. So it's a very flawed game, unfortunately. It's fairly interesting in what it tries to do, and it has the one cool mechanic of the audio analysis. But everything else is pretty tedious, and it just doesn't work all that well. So, that is Silvio. A very flawed, somewhat interesting, and bizarrely obscure horror game.